So the first thing that we want to do today, now that we have our slabs rolled out and they were rough cut last class, and they've been sitting in some damp paper towel, we are now ready to start compressing our slab. So a reminder, when we compress our slabs, this is one of the most important things that we can do when working with slabs. It will make your slab stronger. So you're gonna be using your rubber kidney to compress the slab. Make sure it's clean. If it's not, wipe it off. And you're gonna compress both sides, excuse me, thank you, both sides of the slab should be compressed. Go in multiple directions, only worrying about the top and the bottom, the sides are gonna be cut away. All right, so let's go ahead and take a few minutes to very, very gently and evenly compress your slabs. So enough pressure that you're getting rid of the texture and go in multiple directions. Don't forget to flip it over and to do the back side. All right, so the next step, when we're working with soft slabs, we wanna to try to keep them soft, so we have to work kinda of quickly. So I'm gonna move on. If you would just pause what you're doing, Whenever I'm instructing, just stop and look at what I'm gonna show you next. Now, we're gonna be imprinting the texture next and we're gonna do that before we cut to the template. The reason is, as I roll the texture over this, it's gonna, it's gonna stretch a little bit as I do this. So if I've cut it to the template already and then I roll the texture, I'll have to cut it again. So we're just gonna skip that part for now. We're just gonna focus on texture. When we're rolling texture, if you're using one that's round like this, that's more of a cylinder, I'm gonna do this off to the side just so you can see. You're going to apply even pressure as you roll the roller over the surface of the slab. You also wanna go slow. Here's the thing. If you press with all of your might, you're going to make areas really thin and if the walls get too thin, remember they're gonna dry faster and they're probably gonna crack. So you gotta be really careful. However, if we don't apply enough pressure, you're not gonna get a print at all and we need the texture. So part of the way I'm grading you is that I can see your texture, that it was imprinted evenly across the surface of the slab. Now, we do not have to put texture over the entire thing. We really just need to do one strip of it, okay? Um, the texture, when we do glaze samples, some of the glazes change, or break is what it's called, over texture. So it might change colors um, in lower areas or in higher areas. So we always want to have texture when we're sampling glazes so we can see what happens when it's over texture. But it's also nice to see what happens if there's no texture. So you don't need to fill up the whole thing, okay? I'm going to show you off to the side and then I'll, I'll do, the, I'm going to show you two different, two different texture things. So if I were using a cylinder like this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just use my hands on top, and I'm just going to slowly, putting even, gentle pressure, walk this down my slab. And if I were using one of the spheres, because these are round, they're circular, uh, and they're not flat like the side of the, the um, cylinder is, if I were just to take this and go in a line straight, I'm gonna get one little line of texture and I'd like to see a little bit more. So if you're using one of these, you may as well look because you may wanna use one of these for your choice project. But if you could kind of zigzag with it a little bit, that'll give a little bit more texture, all right? So I'm gonna use this one though. And I'm gonna start at this end closest to me. And I'm gonna just kind of slowly, again, slow is good for this. So I'm just gonna nice, even pressure. I'm pressing down. 
I would even maybe stand up when you do this. You might get um, a more consistent pressure. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk this all the way down until it gets to the other end, and then I'm gonna stop. So if you guys wanna go ahead and start with your texture. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut to the template. So again, if you look up here, just pause whatever you're doing. I put at each table two yellow templates and two rulers, so we're gonna have to take turns, but we wanna cut these to the template. So when we're done, our slab will be the exact same shape and size as our template. The ruler will just help you to make a straight cut. So you're gonna line up the template on top of your texture, like this, and then I'm right-handed, so I like to cut on my right side. If you're left-handed, you can cut on your left side. I'm gonna place my ruler down on top of this, and using your fet fettling knife, you're going to, and remember, whenever we're cutting a slab, you wanna make sure that you keep your knife straight up and down, never cut at an angle, okay? So we want the knife straight up and down, and you're gonna support the end with your finger, and you're just gonna let your ruler, or let the knife glide along the ruler, cutting through the clay. And then you'll do this on all four sides. You can go ahead and start cutting. So I want to talk to you about something really quickly. So if you remember, and we've talked about this before, but we didn't, it didn't really come into play too much for the coil projects. But remember that when we're working with clay, we never want sharp edges. And we just created a lot of sharp edges right now. So we're going to need to finish some of them. So listen first, don't start doing anything. This, this slab is eventually gonna be turned into a cylinder, okay? So that means these short edges are gonna be joined together. Any edges that are joining together do not need to be rounded because they're gonna join together. If we round them, it'll make it more difficult to join them together, okay? So that's the first thing. The long edges of this are gonna be the top and the bottom. Now. When we're working with a cylinder, more than likely, it's going to have a base on the bottom of it. So if you're making a mug or some sort of a canister that you're storing something in, there's going to be a bottom on it. So that means whatever is going to be the bottom of this is going to be attached to a base. So that edge does not need to be finished. The only edge that needs to be finished is whatever is going to be the top. And for a mug, that would be the rim where you would be drinking out of we need to round. So you're gonna decide which side, it really doesn't matter, but one of the long sides, we're gonna round the edge. To do that, uh, this is how I start doing that, if you wanna just watch for a minute. I'm going to just kind of press down a little bit with my finger along the cut edge at the top. So I'm kind of squishing that down just a little bit with gentle, even pressure all the way down. And then I'm going to take my finger, now that I've done that, I'm just going to kind of gently rub back and forth. And that's going to help to kind of round that edge. So you can kind of see, hopefully you can kind of see how it's starting to round. I'm going to also flip my slab over from the back side because this is a cylinder. I'll see the inside and the outside of it. So I'm going to do the same thing on the back side. I'm going to go and kind of gently press down that cut edge start getting it more rounded, and then I'll run my finger across it like I did before. So you guys can follow along with me. And I'm gonna show you one more quick thing here once I get mine rounded. Now, where, where the front and the back meet with this blending that we've done, can you guys look up one more time? So when I stand this up, I'm gonna stand my slab up like this now, and I wanna look at the top edge and I want to I want to smooth that as well. So now I'm just going to kind of go through it. I'm just going to make sure it looks like it's rounded and not flat at all. 
if I need to put it back down and refix it, then I can. So go ahead and continue this. Okay, I'm gonna introduce a new tool to you next. So if everyone can pause what they're doing and look at the screen. So don't, don't start digging for these yet, just wait. I promise I will give you time. You're gonna have plenty of time to work with this tool. But this new tool that we're gonna be using today is called a bevel tool. And a bevel tool allows us to cut the edges of a slab at an angle. Kind of like when we were working with coils and I told you, remember we stacked the coils on top of each other and then we cut through them at an angle? That is also a bevel cut. So that way those, those edges are gonna join together with enough space to make a good bond, right? So this tool is new, so I really wanna make sure everyone's watching so you know how to use it. I think I put the wrong thing in the, um, the steps. If you're following along with the steps, um, I put 45 degree, but I, I made a mistake, it's 60. So just bear with me, I'll change that in there. On here, on this tool, we can make two different angles. We can make a 45 degree angle and we can make a 60 degree angle. Now, they really are gonna do the same thing, except if I were constructing a box, so in ceramics two, if any of you decide you wanna take ceramics two, we'll be working with a slab project where we work with stiff slabs, and stiff slabs can be turned into more of a box that has corners, okay? corners would be created with a 45 degree angle because that way when we join them together, it makes a 90 degree angle, which is part of a square or a rectangle, okay? The 60 degree angle would give us a wider angle, okay? So we're gonna be using it though to help us join the edges of our slab together to make a cylinder so that they can overlap a little bit and we'll have a good join. Now the way this works, if everyone can look up, it seems like this would be the bottom and this would be the top, right? But actually when we use this, the tool goes this way, okay? It almost is gonna look kind of like a T. This bottom part here is gonna slide along the table. The wires are gonna kinda go up. So it's gonna go like this. It's hard for me to show you because of the way the camera is. So I'm gonna hold this up so everyone can see something. So you have to kind of use your imagination for me here. So when I'm doing this, the bottom part, so the 60 degree angle is going to be, can everyone see this? It's gonna cut through the edge of this slab at an angle. The side of the block, this block of wood, oh, some of you are gonna have ones of these that are wood. Some of you are gonna have one that's, that are made out of plastic and there's a red plastic, small red plastic one or a blue one that's about the same size as this. They all do the same thing, okay? So what, imagine this is on the table. I'm gonna be sliding this tool, the bevel tool towards me. And as I'm doing that, I'm gonna make sure that the edge of my slab is lined up on the edge of the block of wood and the wire will then cut through. So it's kind of tricky to show you this, so just kind of bear with me and I kind of explain as I do this, but I don't watch the wire while I'm cutting. If you're watching the wire while you cut, you're not gonna cut it straight. So instead, um, I'm gonna sit down when I do this. Oh, my chair's not there, hold on. So that I can see it better, okay? This part is going flat on the table, okay? So that smaller side, I have the 60 degree angle and I'm gonna line up this edge here with the back edge of my, of my slab. And as I'm pulling this towards me, I'm gonna look at where the wood is lining up with the edge of my slab, ignoring the wire, because I want that to go straight towards me. I'm gonna take my other hand, so I'm a righty, so I'm gonna cut on the right side. If you're a lefty, cut on the left side. But I'm gonna take my thumb of my other hand and I'm gonna put it down at the bottom so it can catch the wire as I, as I cut. So just watch for a second. So I'm, I'm focusing my eyes right there. 
And I'm just gonna kind of slowly and carefully pull this as straight as possible. And then you gotta go a little bit past until it hits your thumb. And then you can remove that piece of clay. And if we look at this from the side, hopefully you can see that that's cut that at an angle, okay? Can everyone watch one more time? One more thing and then you get to do this. And please make sure you're watching so you don't do this backwards because this could be confusing. Okay, is everyone seeing? Once I have my cut here, there's two things we can do. You can also score the clay. So I may just take a moment to score that beveled edge and you wanna make sure you're scoring really, really well so we have a good join. And then we're gonna flip this over and we're gonna do the same thing. When I flip this over, I'm gonna pull up from the, if I'm cutting on my right side, I'm gonna pull up my left side, flip it over this way. So now I'm looking at the back of my slab and my cut edge is now over here on the left side, but it's upside down. If you are left-handed and you cut on the left side, you're gonna just flip yours the opposite way. And we're gonna do another bevel cut on the back on the same side that we've already made one. So again, I'm gonna clean off my tool so there's no clay on it. Line it up on the right side again, and I'm going to watch where it's cutting, take my time, and catch this down here. And then I'll score this edge. You may go ahead and do that. The next step can be kind of tricky, so please make sure you're listening and watching, all right? So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna start to form this into a cylinder. So we're gonna start, and just watch first, but I'm gonna start by um, propping mine up so that it's standing on its bottom, whatever happens to be the unfinished side, okay? And I'm slowly going to start forming this into a cylinder. If you go too quickly, you're gonna get cracks in your project and you're turning in whatever you have. If you start forming this and you're noticing cracks right away, stop, lay it back down flat, wrap it in some damp paper towel, seal it in a bag for about five minutes and then try again. If your clay is getting too dry, it will crack, okay? so. Um, when we start, I'm going to find the center of my wall. So my center is about here. And I'm going to start by, I kind of like put my fingers down the center and slowly, very gently start molding my slab more into like a U shape. Okay, so starting with a U shape and I'm gently kind of walking almost my edges together. And you'll know if you're getting cracks, they're gonna start forming right here where you were bending, okay? So go ahead and, and you can start doing this with me. Don't start talking though, because I wanna show you a few more things as we go. It's so like once you get it to about a U, um, like mine looks, you can just stop for a moment. So to get the edges together, okay, we're gonna kind of ignore this half now where we have like the bottom of our U so I'm gonna turn this a little bit so it's easier for me. And I'm gonna just focus on my ends here, slowly starting to, and then you can form them around your finger again, your fingers again, slowly start to bend these edges inward, a little bit at a time. Now, little surface cracks, we'll be able to deal with those later. It's, we just wanna worry about really big cracks that maybe are starting to form. Just stop if that happens. Sometimes you may need to like turn it upside down and look at it from the, from, from the bottom. That's fine too. So like if I had to turn this upside down, if that makes it easier, I could do that as well. And then we want, the goal is, uh, that we're gonna join these edges together. But before I get too much further, um, we're gonna, I'm gonna add my slip. So at this point, once you have it pretty close together, we can add our slip. So go ahead and do that when you're ready. Make sure you're adding slip to both of your scored edges. 
And then again, if we could stop talking, please, I'm almost done. We're gonna just kind of carefully bring these closer together and then they should overlap. So you're gonna do your best to get those to overlap. When you're pressing the seam together, hey guys, I'd appreciate it if we stop talking. When we start pressing the seam together, be very, very aware. You do not want the seam part of your wall to be too thin. So don't, you're not gonna pinch, no pinching, okay? But kind of gently pressing the slab ends together. And while the slip is still pretty wet, you could readjust as needed. But when you look at it from like the side view, you're looking to make sure that your walls are approximately the same thickness throughout. So look at it from the top and the bottom and make sure you're getting it lined up correctly. Now we will be taking care of the seam that you see there. Just don't do anything to it yet. I'm gonna show you how to deal with the seam in a moment. So right now we're just lining everything up. Once you have it lined up, I want you to set it back down so that the top is facing up. And I want you to just kind of carefully adjust it in your hands to make it as circular as possible. So you're gonna look at it from above and just try to make it as circular as possible. So it really doesn't matter if you compress or blend uh, the inside or the outside first, but both need to be blended. So I'm gonna show you how to blend the outside first. So when I'm looking at my, at my particular slab here, um, this is where my seam is. And when we blend this seam, I want you to realize that some of the texture is gonna blend away and that's okay. All right, whenever you're blending, especially a cylinder like this, I like to make sure I'm supporting the inside of my walls so that I'm not like misshapening what I've already formed. So I have my hands on the inside of my cylinder to help support it. And then I'm gonna use my rubber kidney. Now, when, when my slab overlapped, Hopefully you can see the inside slab is kind of going that direction. My outside of my slab or the outside of my cylinder is going in this direction. I want to try to blend with the direction that my slab is going in, okay? So mine's going this way, so I'm going to blend that way. So I'm going to use my rubber kidney, and I'm going to just kind of start blending and compressing, going in the direction that my slab was first. And if you still need to adjust anything, you can. Once you've kind of gone through and blended in the direction that your slab was going, you can then go up and down. So then I would just kind of go up and down, back and forth. The more you can compress this, the better. Just again, be really um, conscious that you're not like scraping away a bunch of clay, making the seam thin. Thin areas will um, dry faster and turn to cracks, so please be careful. And then like as a last resort, after you've done compressing that and blending, um, I also like to use my fingers just to go in and blend a little bit more. Little surface cracks that maybe are forming um, on your cylinder, when this clay is a little bit more leather hard, we'll be able to blend those in with our blending brush, but let's not worry about it today. One more thing, we're gonna blend the inside as well, so if you would pause for a moment. You're going to wanna use your wooden modeling tool to blend the inside seam. When I do this, I'm gonna hold my cylinder in the palm of my hand like this, so that when I'm blending, I'm supporting the clay on the outside with my palm. I'm gonna use the rounded side of my modeling tool. And again, so for mine on the inside, my inside of my slab is kind of going in that direction. So I wanna blend going in that direction so that I don't pull my slab apart. So I'm gonna start by going sideways. 
And then once I blend that in a little bit more, then I can kind of go up and down with this and I can blend with my finger. But you wanna start with your modeling tool. And about halfway down, you'll wanna then flip, flip this over and blend from the other direction. So I'm just gonna turn my slab this way so I can get the bottom half more easily. Now that I've turned this over, though I have to blend in the other direction, just my coil or my slab's going that way now. And the goal of this is to try to make your cylinder seamless, which means that we cannot see where the seam was. You can also go in with your finger afterwards and just kind of smooth. I would also take a moment to blend and compress the top of your rim um, either with the modeling tool or the rubber kidney. I use the rubber kidney. So we can't see the rim or we can't see the seam on the rim um, and on the bottom. And then if you need to like re-round your rim a little bit, you can do that with your hands, just with your fingers should be fine. And then I would also flip it over and look at the bottom and make sure the bottom seam is compressed. The, the next step before we store these, just make sure it's as round as possible. I'm just gonna come around and take a look. We're not gonna turn these in today. We'll turn these in next class. And we want them to get closer to the dry leather hard stage before we turn them in. Um, so to get them there, what you're going to do is we're going to start by stuffing the inside of the cylinder with dry paper towel. This will also help to make sure that your project doesn't get squished. So I'm just going to take some paper towel and slowly kind of start squishing it down on the inside of my cylinder. I'm also going to then wrap the outside of my cylinder in a layer of dry paper towel. And then when you store these, whenever we store a cylinder, it's really important that it sits on its bottom, standing up as a cylinder. We don't ever wanna lay our cylinders on their side or they'll get squished and you won't get them back round. So keep them standing up straight. And then lastly, we don't want these to dry to bone dry, so we're gonna seal them in a bag. So once you have this, you're then going to seal this into a bag. You guys should have extra bags. If you need one, I have some up here on my table. Go ahead, once you're done, we'll store these in our cabinet.